Coming up, a Celtic talk from Iron Age Iberia, broken pots mending lives, Carenza recognised by the British Academy, and a lost Mayan palace. Welcome to Time Team News, our new monthly feature bringing you all the latest archaeology stories and discoveries from Britain and across the globe. Well, can you believe it? We're on episode three already. Our first two episodes are available over on our YouTube channel, following the links below. Now, we've upped our game this month because we're actually on site excavating in Dorset at the moment. And you can find out all about this excavation over on our Patreon channel. But stick with us for the moment because we've got some fantastic stories lined up for you and we're going to have some very special guests dropping in. So first, as always, let's check out a few of your comments. Ali McGrath asks, what can archaeology tell us about gardening rather than agriculture? How have advances in environmental archaeology opened new doors in this area? Well, you might recall the episode There's No Place Like Rome from series 14. This was a Romano-British site in Somerset where we reconstructed an authentic Roman garden and you can check it out on the Time Team Classics channel. One tiny but fascinating find from that dig included an ancient coriander seed. Coriander isn't native to Britain, so it represents an import or trade from the wider Roman Empire. Now, coriander is a culinary herb, so it's most likely that this seed has come from a plant that's been deliberately cultivated, i.e. it's growing in a garden, or who knows, perhaps even on a windowsill in the way that many herbs are grown today. Well, the subject of garden archaeology is vast, and hopefully this is something that we can revisit in the future. There was a lot of love for John's trip to the Ness of Brodga in the comments, including lots of suggestions for those mysterious stone bowls, everything ranging from fishing weights to games to weaving looms. Great ideas, but for the time being, their exact purpose remains a mystery. And thanks to everyone else for all your lovely comments flowing in. Archaeological discoveries can be made in all kinds of different ways. And with this next example in the news, it was actually the weather. A landslide likely caused by a fire in northwest Spain brought an exquisite find to the surface, a beautiful gold talk provisionally dated to two and a half thousand years old. It was found by a worker for a water company while carrying out a survey of the land, and he immediately notified archaeologists. And fragments of a second talk were then subsequently found in the area following further investigation. Talks are a type of rigid necklace, frequently made of gold, and they're often made of strands of gold twisted around each other, which is where we get the word talk, meaning twisted in Latin. They were worn by people during the European Iron Age and into the Roman period. And they are serious bling. Not everyone would have owned an item like this, and so they're most likely worn as a symbol of status. There's a famous sculpture of the dying Gaul wearing a talk, and several talks are also depicted on the famous Gunstruck cauldron that was discovered back in 1891 in Denmark. Talks have been found all across Europe in a wide range of styles, some with elaborate looped terminals like those in the Snettisham Hoard in East Anglia, or what's known as buffer terminals in Gaul, modern France. The newly discovered examples from northern Spain are particularly indicative of the style found around the North Iberian Peninsula, with terminals that resemble a candlestick holder. The wider region of what is now northwest Spain was once home to a range of different tribes, including the Cantabri and the Asturias, names that are still evident in local place names, including the University of Cantabria that has been involved in the discovery. 
although many ancient talks have been found previously. A large number of these were antiquarian discoveries, which generally place less value on the archaeological contexts than the finds themselves. So their original context either wasn't recorded or it's simply been lost to time. This new discovery is particularly important because it's got the potential to provide valuable information about the archaeological context in which the talk was discovered. Of course, it's the gold jewellery that makes the headlines, but for me, it's the story of the people behind it that's most compelling and fascinating. These beautifully constructed items highlight the sophistication of the culture that made them. So I'm joined by Professor Carenza Lewis, who's just heard some fantastic news. She's been awarded a British Academy Landscape Archaeology Medal. Carenza, can you tell us a bit more about it? Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. It's I was just absolutely stunned. I mean, it's really prestigious. It's the British Academy. It's their Landscape Archaeology Medal. The other people who've won it are the great and the good. And I was, I was so surprised when I got the email saying congratulations on your award. I assumed it was a scam. It's like there's ones that say you've won a prize. Because <laughs> I, I didn't know I was up for it or anything. It's a kind of career recognition thing. And it's, you know, it's just lovely. I'm really, really pleased. Uh, Such an amazing, like you say, it really is a prestigious award. Does this involve all the, all the test pitting that you've been doing over the years? Yes. So I think that's mainly what my work has been over the last 20 years, has been looking at these inhabited villages. So previously, when people had looked at uh, medieval settlements, they tended to look at the deserted medieval villages, partly because they're quite intriguing because it's a deserted settlement. It's like finding a you know a dead body ghost village, you know, there's that what happened to it sort of thing. Whereas the 90% of settlements that people lived in in the medieval period are still inhabited today. We've done two and a half thousand test pits in a hundred villages, mostly in the UK. I've started extending it over the last few years into the Netherlands, Czech Republic, Poland and Germany. And in terms of volunteers, 10,000 people, that's a, an amazing number of people to involve. What kind of benefits do you think people get from being involved in archaeology projects like that? like this they just kind of were buzzing you get these kids who turned up looking bewildered or kind of slightly over cool and, and self-conscious and that buzz that they got from it well you've certainly made a difference and i'm really glad that you've been recognized by the british academy for this fantastic british archaeology landscape award congratulations professor carenza lewis thank you very much and i'm very great to the british academy as well If you've seen our new Digging Band of Brothers special with Tony Robinson, you'll know all about Operation Nightingale. This Ministry of Defence initiative uses archaeology to support the recovery of servicemen and women returning from conflict. Helen has caught up with Operation Nightingale's co-founder Richard Osgood and photographer Harvey Mills to discover more about their brand new book, Broken Pots, Mending Lives. Richard, I've been really enjoying your new book, which is just Good. out, isn't it? Yes, just out yeah. this year. You tell some really personal stories. Mm. Did they take a while to, to get out of people? Or, I mean, I, I was surprised at how much, how much detail. You know, occasionally yeah. I was shedding a tear yeah. at the things that people had it, been through. It's really interesting, but I wanted it to be about people mm -hmm. and those stories of why we're doing this work. Um, the military people tell some, as you say, they're quite harrowing tales, but sometimes it's a, it's a positive by the end. Um, and they often take a time to open up to you, because if you're not military, you're not quite part of that mm. tribe. Yeah. But once they know you, after a while, they, they will open up. And I think that's really important. As you said, they seem to be happy enough, and may, maybe it's part of their, their movement forward. When you read their stories and you, you look at them and you think what they've been through and you think... I put myself in that and I think I can't imagine having to do what you've done and um, if yeah. archaeology can help you it's quite humbling really because I do archaeology because I love it and mm. it's a day job but for them if it improves where they are in life the whole program is not about creating archaeologists um, but we have had quite a few that have now mm. gone on to it and Kenny I mentioned who found the bucket he's just finished his 10th year as a professional yeah. archaeologist yeah. so yeah. it's not the aim and I think um, 
What we do aim to create is a, a safer space, um, one of discovery and, and making friendships. That's yeah, the key thing. And, the, and the good thing is that this is now all in the book. Mm. It's, it's such a fantastic title, Broken Pots Mending Lives, because it, it, archaeology has mended so many lives, whether they've been really shattered uh -huh. or whether they're just slightly off track and you can pull them up, Absolutely. Uh, back again. In, in many environments. Yeah. Mm. The thing, I always joke about the... Um, the digs being battle honours. Um, if they've done a certain <laughs> yeah. dig, they'll yes. have it as a regiment, you know, their own person. Did you do Barrow Clump, for example? Yes. And if you didn't do Barrow Clump, oh, well, you're one of the newbies. You weren't there. Exactly, <laughs> it's all that sort of stuff. I was at Barrow Clump. You were Barrow Clump, yeah, exactly. Only for a so, few yeah, days. Yeah, no, well, you were definitely there. And your fantastic photographs, Harvey. But what really amazed me was things like, um, well, apart from the incredibly atmospheric things like that. See, there's no filter even on that. Harvey's very particular about not using filters no. on these, and that's... But Incredible. but there's there's stu what look like you've taken them in a in a in a studio you know something like that that's so beautifully lit that's so perfectly suspended in space. Most of the shots in there are fines and not done in the studio. Most of them are done actually on site. One of the big things for me, certainly with with small finds photography, is is to try and get it as fresh as I can. Um, but, you know, it's always nice to get conserved pieces, but I think it's it's also nice just to get things with a bit of mud on them as well. Well, thank you very much. It's lovely to be able to talk to you about this book, and I hope. It, I hope it sells really well. Right, it, and all, all money to charity. Oh, right. Yep. Fantastic. Every, every penny will go to uh, SAFA, which is the military charity, right. which has helped out some of our Lovely. Team. Yeah, so if anybody wants to know more about it, there it is. Broken Pots, Mending Lives by Richard Osgood with all the fantastic photographs taken by Harvey Mills, apart from one by Alice Roberts. Look out for the cartoons by Alice as well. Um, and hopefully in another 10 years, we'll get volume two. That would be great. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you both very much. Pleasure. Thank you. And we have some signed copies available in the official Time Team shop while stocks last. We like to see what's happening in archaeology all around the world. And this recent discovery caught our eye from the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico in the Caba Archaeological Zone. In preparation for a new railway route, the National Institute of Anthropology and History have identified two previously unknown pre-Columbian residential complexes, including a huge structure described as a palace. The buildings have been provisionally dated to about one and a half thousand years ago, around 500 AD. The city of Kaba, which means Lord of the Strong or Powerful Hand in the Mayan dialect, is a well-known archaeological site and a popular tourist spot. Kaba's most recognised building is the Palace of the Masks, so-called because of the intricate, beautifully crafted relief work on its walls. The faces with a distinctive elongated nose are said to represent the rain god Chark. However, the newly discovered buildings are of particular interest because of their residential nature. Now, according to the official statement, this is the first time that there's a record of ancient homes inside this Mayan site. One of these buildings is especially impressive. It's 26 metres in length, with a main facade composed of a portico with eight pilasters and nine openings. The structure would have been decorated with carvings of feathers, birds and beads. Now you might wonder that such a large structure with huge stonework still in situ has only recently come to attention. However, as the reports highlight, there were already indirect notions of these complexes within the settlement, but they'd until recently been covered in dense vegetation. What an incredible discovery. And finally, We've had some inspiring community archaeology projects this month from Carenza's work through to Operation Nightingale. And I'd like to end this update with news of a community project from up north. Farmworth near Bolton in northwest England. Bolton Council and local charity Banana Enterprise Network have been awarded National Lottery Heritage funding for their Rock Hall Revival project. The hall is a Grade II listed building that was built in 1807 by John Crompton II, whose family had owned paper mills in Lancashire since 1676, and they owned a nearby paper mill next to Rock Hall. 
Johnson Thomas patented a paper drying process that revolutionized the paper making industry and in its day the mill supplied paper for many of London's newspapers. Now, whilst the mill was demolished in the 70s, Rock Hall survived and eventually went on to become a visitor centre and the base for the Crawl Irwell Valley Country Park Rangers. Sadly, in recent years, it's fallen into disrepair. But now, the development stage of the new project promises to redevelop Rock Hall as a centre for the community and enhance the natural environment of Moses Gate Country Park. There'll be many opportunities for the community to get involved and engage with the area's important industrial heritage and green spaces. Congratulations to all involved. So that's it for this month. Again, do let us know about any stories or discoveries that you'd like to see featured in the comments section below. 3D models for the stories that we've covered this month are available over on our Patreon channel, along with lots of other goodies such as Q&As and masterclasses. And if you want us to do more digs, help us to achieve our goal of 10,000 Patreon members. We're at 9,000 already. So thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and I look forward to seeing you next time. Join Time Team on Patreon to access exclusive 3D models, masterclasses and behind the scenes insights.